The heaviest things in life aren't iron and gold, but unmade decisions. The reason you are stressed is that you have decisions to make and you're not making them. It's a good quote. <laughs> you said it. You said it. I think a lot of times the decisions that we make are predicated on the on the conversations we need to have because usually like the and what's interesting is like you can define commitment by eliminating alternatives. So if you're committed, you've eliminated alternative actions. Right? Like you can say I'm committed, but until you eliminate other options, you're not committed. There's always a get out of jail free card. Right. And so a lot of people make decisions to end relationships, to quit their job, to start the new thing but they don't become committed to the decision until they remove the other options and then you're forced to take action on it. And so I think actually defining those two, two different things. Now you could define, you know, decision is to kill off like decadere from Latin, but from a, from an, from a colloquial thing, I think there are two different instances. It's like, I need to change this and then I do change it. Um, And the making the decision is when it becomes a commitment. Why are unmade decisions so heavy? I think, at least for me, it's because I have this hamster wheel on the my back of my mind where I keep playing out different scenarios. And so I keep thinking like, well, maybe maybe I need to change what I'm currently doing. Maybe maybe if I just rethought, like, because I'm, I'm a big frame guy. So I'm like, maybe I just need to be thinking about this differently, right? Or maybe if I zoom all the way out, the earth doesn't exist. So maybe this doesn't matter. Or maybe I'm just making a problem that doesn't exist. Maybe the best action I should take is nothing, right? Like I, you know, I reframe all those things. Um, but usually it's just because I'm afraid of something. And then that's why I'm not making the decision. And I think once I name and put a face, and it's usually not even a thing that I'm afraid of, it's one person's judgment I'm afraid of. And then when I name the person, then it becomes then it becomes real. Instead of being this amorphous like people, society, judgment, it's like Tom. I'm like, do I really care what Tom thinks? I guess so. It seems like I'm not making this big change in my life because of Tom. Looks like Tom's more in control of my life than I am. Dude. So I remember this when I was 19 years old. I was super angry, like all 19 year old men, right? That's the, the standard default, right? I was angry at both my parents for who, because I was 19, right? And I remember blaming them for everything, blaming them for my life, blaming them for not being a better person. I literally blamed them for being a bad person. <laughs> and I remember realizing that when I blamed them, that I gave them control over my life. And then the idea that the people that I hated the most at the time were the ones who actually were controlling me was the thing that most sickened me to then actually flip my narrative to actually taking control. Like that was the one thought process. Like my mother, I'm giving her control over my romantic relate. Like my mother controls this? Fuck that. I was like, no. And so like just the idea that somebody who I... <laughs> I was disgusted by at the time um had that much power is what gave me the power to start taking action so this hamster wheel thing yeah. that continues to distract you i've got this concept called anxiety cost uh -huh. so kind of like opportunity Ooh, cost yeah um when you have an unmade decision every single second that you spend thinking about the unmade decision could have been gotten back had you just made the decision oh yeah and realizing that it, it's it's a justification for eating frogs earlier in the day. I need to answer that email. The longer that you wait until you answer that email, the more times you will think the thought, I need to answer that email. Yeah. And if we assume that what truly, truly matters in life is the time and the attention that we spend within that time, your time is being captured and your attention is being captured by a thought that could have been gotten rid of had you have just done it, had you have just had the conversation, broken up yeah. with the relationship, left the job, told the father, whatever, d d done your stretches, cleaned your teeth, had a shower, whatever it is that you needed to do, all of that anxiety cost could have been gotten rid of had you just gone and done it. You can move through life at seven times the rate of other people by simply changing when you say you're going to make a decision from end of week to end of day. So think about how that stacks up. So it's like, let's say that there were four decisions that you needed to make. If the normal person takes a week to make the decision and then their mind moves on to the next thing that they have anxiety for and start making that decision and decide another week, decide another week, decide another week. It's a month to make those four decisions. Whereas the, the super, the Superman that takes one decision day one, one deci second decision day two, third decision day three, fourth decision day four. They aren't even finished the week yet and they're where the other person is at the end of the month. And like, 
that speed of decision making, like not paying the attention cost, the opportunity cost of your time, I think it's really profound in terms of how quickly people move through life in terms of achieving the goals that they set out. Because people are like, how did that, how is that guy so young and he's achieved X, Y, and Z? It's like, well, what takes you a month to make a decision? We make it an hour. And then the next hour, I make another decision that takes you your next month. And so like, that's how you can go 30 times or a hundred times faster than, than the quote average person who's overweight, has a thousand dollars in their bank account, you know, and is going to die at 70. Can you just go back to before you made that first decision yeah. with your dad? Because you've mentioned it, you know, people might look at your, I would say ruthlessness, at least in some <laughs> regards with decision-making, you know, yeah. hiring and firing and making these business decisions. And there's yeah. all of these great stories about, and I had this thing and I realized that partner wasn't right. So I got yeah. rid of that business. And, you know, that's the sort of thing that would tear most people up for yeah. six months, 18 months, maybe forever. Yeah. And to look at that degree of cutthroatness or at least um, decisiveness, I think is almost unfathomable for a lot of people. Are you a representative avatar? Is pre-leaving Baltimore Alex a representative avatar for the average person? I think so. I mean, I was high achieving. You know, I, I mean, like I did well in school. I tried hard. I did those things. But in terms of my risk tolerance and my fear of failure and my insecurities, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if anything, Real talk, I'll bet you that I have more insecurities than most people because those insecurities are what drove me to do well in those things. Not because I cared about school, but because I cared about what other people thought about me. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I've spoken to hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of high performers. On balance, people are driven way more by fear of insufficiency than they are for, with some well balanced, perfect desire to just maximize their greatness in life. Like the activation energy for almost everybody is I'm scared I might be a piece of shit. What? Hang on. Oh God, I might be a piece of shit. I genuinely might be a piece of shit. I need to go and do something so outrageous that I, I can't be a piece of shit. I, there's no way that it could happen. I might be a coward. Oh my God. What, what can I do to stop myself from being a coward? That's the activation energy. It's funny because if you regress fear to its most basic form, it's death. And death is the greatest motivator. And like you can prove it in a simple example. It's like if I all of a sudden go up to anybody on the street and I put a gun in their head and I say, you know, point a gun at their head and I say, go do this thing, they'll go do it. But if I say, you can have anything you want if you do this, they're willing to go 10 times harder with a gun in their face to not die. And so if you take fear and regress it all the way down to its basis form, like that's what the insecurity is. Like if they, they think I won't be enough and if they don't think I won't be enough, then this won't happen. If this won't happen, this won't happen. I'll be alone. I'll be dead. <laughs> right? Like if you just regress it all the way down, like that's all it is. And yeah. so like the biggest achievers in life, I think have, have most directly tied them not doing whatever it is that they want to do to death, whether they're consciously aware of it or not. And then that's what motivates them harder.